Okay. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the chair to invite me to deliver a talk on cyber security for 5G wireless networks. So today, my talk has, is the title of a security enhancement for 5G wireless networks. I was introduced by the chair that uh, my name is Modern Ma from Kenyan Center for Computing Research, College of Engineering in Qatar University. So this is supposed to be my email and my website so that uh, you can get more information from my website uh, for further contact to me. Okay. Right. Okay. On uh, today's talk, I have a few sub 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 topics. First of all, let me simply introduce the 5G wireless network architecture and fundamental functions. And also, I want to explore the vulnerabilities and threats inside the 5G wireless network. And followed by the motivation of our research work to enhance the security function of the uh, 5G wireless network. And we, we provide two examples of the enhancement. One example is the enhancement for the handover authentication. The second one is for the scenario of D2D communication. After this uh, two, uh, after the introduction of the two examples, we have summarized some open research issues which need further research investigations. At last, we have the simple com com conclusion. So, okay, so. Uh, Nowadays, the 5G wireless network has become a major carrier for wireless communication that could support internet to everything and large scale heterogeneous connections. So that the 5G wireless network has shown many uh, promising and advanced features. For the, for the standardization of the 5G wireless network, the third generation partnership project has produced the technical specification for the 5G wireless network. Uh, the, spe the, the specification is the TS23.501, release 16, which is uh, supposed to be a major, uh, major uh, standard to specify the architecture various functions of 5G wireless networks. Now this 5G wireless network have been deployed in many countries like China and Qatar. And it is already in the, in, in the execution of the commercial uh, uh, average, uh, applications. So let me First of all, to introduce uh, the architecture of the uh, 5G wireless network. Uh, 5G wireless network, similar as the 4G, uh, that uh, there are two domains of the networks. One is the wireless access, wireless access uh, network. The other is the 5G core network. So this, this is the core network, and this is the uh, wireless access network. Excuse me, Professor so, Ma, the presentation is not, uh, is there a presentation? Sorry? The presentation is not moving. It has moved. No, 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 it's not moving in our side. Oh. But uh, I, I don't know, it's uh, still in the, in the sharing. Let, let me let me let me see. It's changed. No, still no. 
Wow, that's what, that would be a problem. Maybe if you make it the full screen, yes, we can see now. Yes, we can see hand you over. You can see now, right? Yeah. So yeah. I just now I I make it uh, as the presentation mode. Can you see now? Uh, we we see now the architecture. Yes. The previous picture. Uh, can you go the introduction? Okay. Is the change or not? No. Oh, then we I cannot uh, put into this uh, this mode. Right? I just uh, simply use this mode. This will be easy. We we now have the introduction. Yes, yes. There is maybe a little a little delay. Sorry for this. Uh, yes. Thank you. So uh, did you 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 see this one or yes? Yes, I see now the introduction. Yes. Yes, uh, introduction is uh, is. Uh, it's in the current mode. It's not the uh, presentation mode. Yes. How about this one? How about it's this one? It's in current mode. No, no. No change. No change. No. Okay. Then I think uh, I, I need. I, I just keep this uh, this way to show. Okay. Thank oh. you. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry to the delay. So that the, you can see that the, the 5G wireless network has two domains. One is the wireless success uh, network. The other portion is the 5G call network. So in 5G call network, there are many servers which are called as uh, functions. While in the 5G uh, radio access network, there are two, on, only two types of uh, devices. One is uh, C node B. Basically, it's a base station. The other is uh, user equipment, which are supposed to be the, 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 the cellular phones everybody uh, is holding. So that uh, the wireless communication between the user equipment and the T node B is going to deliver information over the wireless channel, 5G wireless channel, while the GNOB has a connection with the 5G core network, which basically goes through the uh, cable uh, connection. So we see that uh, in this uh, in this uh, architecture, uh, 5G wireless network, uh, as I mentioned, that has uh, it's a radio access network, which is a simple. While the core network. In, in the core network, there are many servers where they are called as uh, functions. So first of all, there is a so-called access and mobility management function, AMF. The second one is the session management function, SMF. And the third one is user plan function, UPF. Authentication server function, AUSF, and the last one, authentication conf confidential repository and processing function, ARPF. So those are the major servers inside the 5G core network to play different roles, to manage the, the traffic from the radio access network to the core network. Also, they manage the authent uh, uh, author account information uh, as well as authentication uh, process. So this is supposed to be the simple introduction of the 5G architecture with, uh, with very simple radio access network and uh, call network. Now we we know that uh, in uh, in a common operation the so user equipment will get connection to the uh, GNOB, which is uh, supposed to work as a uh, base station and wirelessly, so that uh, the user equipment can get connection to the core network and further to get the internet. However, this is a normal operation as we have uh, normally in 4G. But in the, in the 
5G wireless network. Uh, since we have an introduction of EMF, which is uh, supposed to be manage the handover authentication process. Uh, so we see that uh, there are two types of handover scenarios. One is intra EMF handover. The second one is inter EMF handover. So I believe everybody has clear picture about the handover process. But uh, in each handover process, there should be an authentication uh, procedure to be to be to be uh, to be completed in order to let the new GNOB or we call it a target GNOB to understand the user's confidential information. Well, there are two types of uh, handovers. From this, is it clear from this uh, picture that uh, AMF is going to manage many number of genobies. Like this, there are three genobies in this, uh, in the uh, in the management uh, by the this uh, AMF. However, there are other genobies which which are be which will be controlled by some other AMF. So that uh, when we talk about the intra AMF, um, we are intra AMF handover. We are talking about the user equipment changes the location from the current uh, serving. GNOB to the target GNOB. For example, from this one to this one. So this is uh, supposed to be intro AMF handover because this serving GNOB and the target GNOB are both under the control of one AMF. So there is another scenario which is called the inter AMF handover, which means that uh, if a user changes a location from a current uh, location to the location which has the communication to the GNOB controlled by another AMF, we mentioned that this uh, this handover is a so-called inter AMF handover. So for inter AMF handover, we also have the authentication process, but this authentication process is a little bit different from the previous one, intra AMF handover. So in the design of the authentication process, we need to consider this uh, difference. In the in the 4G LTE system, there is no such kind of AMF in the management of those uh, genomes. So 5G has introduced this AMF in order to increase the service area. Uh, not only service area, because of the, gene, the, 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 the data transmission rate has been increased so that the, the, the transmission range has been shortened. So that uh, the there should be a lot of genomes uh, to to manage the, the the cellular communication compared with the 4G LTE, so that uh, each genome has a smaller uh, communication range, so that uh, there should be a much larger genomes to be controlled by. 5G call network, so so that uh, we need to have introduced the AMF. So this is a basic basic difference between the 5G and the 4G wireless network. In 4G wireless network, there is no such function. There is no AMF function. Anyway, so this is a handover uh, scenario. So our work has addressed much about the handover authentication in two handover scenarios. So the other scenario is a D2D communication. So uh, in fact, uh, in this uh, 5G wireless network, uh, there's no, no much difference between the 5G and the 4G. So anyway, for D2D communication, there are three types of communication mode. One is that uh, both devices are within 
the coverage of one base station or zero B. Well, the second mode is that uh, one user equipment is out of the communication range of the zero B, while the other one is inside the communication range of the zero B. So that uh, this these two types of D2D communication all needs the assistance from the Gino B in order to have a, a perfect D2D communication. For example, if two users, two user equipment are inside the uh, communication range of a Gino B, which one they are what they, they are going to have the uh, D2D communication. So each of the user equipment need to have authentication with the Gino B first, and then they negotiate the common uh, common session key so that the, the information could be delivered, exchanged uh, in the in the uh, separate separate uh, mode. While well, the other the second mode, so since one user equipment is outside the Gino B, so that this uh, the user equipment inside the communication range will play the major role in order to support the D2D communication. So that uh, uh, this type of this type of communication also needs the help from the genome B. While the third type, which uh, which is the scenario that uh, both user equipment are all outside of the communication range of the genome B, so that uh, that D2D communication cannot get any help from the, the genome. So that uh, we need to have a special design in order to uh, smoothly complete the D2D communication between two user equipments. So this slide simply summarizes the three types of uh, D2D communication mode. Uh, the first one is called the in coverage mode. The second one is called the relay coverage or partial coverage mode. And the third one is out of coverage mode. So that the last one uh, will not get any help from the DNOB or base station uh, in the system. Only two devices need to have the, to set up the connection to perform the authentication to mutually recognize each other. And to finally, to share the to to produce the shared uh, session key for the information delivery purpose. So, uh, from this architectural five G network, we we can we can see that uh, there are lots of opportunities for a hacker to invade the five G wireless network. Of course. Since the five G call network uh, are supposed to be connected by the cables, the possibility uh, of the attacker to get into the five G call network uh, is lower. However, it is still some kind of a passive attacker to intercept the communication within the call five G call network. While the dangerous portion of the 5G wireless network is the 5G wireless access network. So over here, all the communications in the, in the radio wireless communication, uh, radio wireless access network are wireless so that the, 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 the wireless communication, we know that is open and dynamic so that the, any attacker could intercept or even perform kind of active acts and attacks to the information exchange inside the radio access network. So this radio access network is uh, much more vulnerable and the different types of attackers, including the passive attack attacker and uh, active attacker. So basically, we, we summarize some fundamental or typical uh, cyber attacks. One of them is the so-called evil dropping, which is a passive attack 
uh, uh, that uh, for attacker to intercept the communication channel to get the uh, user data information or the control information between the user equipments. Impersonation attack is a, a, a which is a attacker to pretend to be another user uh, to get access to the network. Data fabrication attack, which is an active attacker to create uh, fake data in order to manipulate other user equipment. Data modification, which is an active attacker to change the data sent from a specific user to for falsity or uh, falsify other users. And jamming and denial of service attack. Attackers can deliberately disrupt or block the connection of normal users in the network. So those types of attacks uh, could happen in the normal cellular uh, communication mode, as well as the handover authentication. On the other hand, some other types of attacks could be possible for the D2D uh, communication. So first of all, it's a privacy violation attack, which that uh, uh, device discover uh, may contain identity information so that the attacker can treat the device by continuously sniffing D2D broadcasts. Pre-writing, which is in fact not, uh, uh, not exactly an attack, but is the selfish behavior of the user equipment. Those uh, selfish users only receive content or information from others but refuse to help others relate data to uh, save their own battery. The uh, availability and service quality of the D2D network could be severely ne uh, negatively affected by free riding attack. Then location spoofing, which is an active attacker which can send out malicious location information to confuse existing D2D users, or even disrupt D2D group forming. So these three types of attacks are typical attacks appeared in a D2D communication. Uh, so according to the, based on the observation of those uh, uh, vulnerabilities in the 5G wireless network. Um, we have the uh, attention uh, to our motivation to develop secure and efficient uh, authentication protocols in order to, to safeguard the, the 5G wireless network in the two scenarios, including the handover scenarios and uh, the D2D communication scenario. In fact, five, uh, 3GPP standardization has already its standard to ensure various network scenarios to meet the security requirements in 5G wireless network, as we mentioned uh, just now. Uh, however, not only this, uh, this uh, standardization activities, but also some many research uh, research solutions have been proposed to enhance the security functionality against the various and malicious attacks. However, uh, we we have observed that those uh, 3GPP standard and many other solutions have ignored uh, some, basically one of the two issues of the 5G wireless network security. One issue is that uh, with enhanced security functionality, they, they probably ignore the network performance, which means that uh, they have enhanced sec security functions for 5G wireless network, but uh, 
they have allowed this, the situation that uh, the 5G wireless network has a very high data transmission rate, so that uh, this network needs very good performance. Uh, the, 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 the security function which has developed for the 5G wireless network should be real-time in nature. So some of the solutions have not uh, overlooked this, uh, this uh, special issue. While some solutions have take too much attention to the uh, performance issue, well, they may just design a very simple security function to protect the system. But uh, in fact, in reality, some attackers are very dangerous so that they, are, they can easily to break the simple design uh, protocol. So that the, 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 the philosophy here is that how can we achieve a trade-off between the network performance and the security requirement of the 5G wireless network and different applications over the 5G wireless network. Based on this uh, uh, consideration, we have the motivation to design and develop novel, efficient security solutions to protect 5G wireless network, uh, not only effectively, but also efficiently in different network scenarios. So the philosophy of our research work is to achieve a balance between the security functionality and the performance of the 5G network. So uh, as we mentioned that uh, we have considered uh, two types of uh, communication scenarios. One is the uh, handover scenario. And this uh, handover scenario will include uh, two types of uh, handover scenarios. One is the uh, intra AMF handover, the other is inter AMF handover. So that uh, we, we first of all to design a lightweight and secure handover authentication scheme to in secure handover process in 5G wireless network. So it's uh, simply named as LSHA. Um, the, we say that the LSHA has uh, some outstanding features. First of all, it can achieve key forward secrecy by using a message authentication code with the ability to prevent denial of a service attack and desynchronization attacks. The RSHA integrate the concept of cellular network with a neighbor graph by which the process of in encrypting next cost will be limited to the neighbor genome base as a uh, target genome base of the serving genome base. Only a few target genome base will be uh, specified. The RSHA scheme has a new renewal policy of pre-shared keys to prevent the key leakage to some extent. And the proposed RSHA scheme has a much lower delay performance compared to other existing schemes, uh, particularly compared with those new recent solutions proposed for the 5G handover solution schemes. As our SSHA has uh, security functions against the DOS and distributed DOS attacks uh, against email dropping and message modification attacks, impersonation or uh, impersonation attack, false sophistication attack, uh, pre shared key leakage, and so on. In order to prove the logic correctness of our proposed uh, solution, security solution, which target to protect the 
a novel authentication we have used uh, so-called a uh, logical calculus uh, to to derive the logical correctness of our proposed solution. Basically, this uh, logic uh, calculus uh, base works based on a great set of deduction rules for formally reasoning about the authentication protocols. And this is called the uh, uh, logic of authentication. And uh, this logic calculus we use is a so-called band logic, which is a model logic for analyzing authentication protocols. And it is used to reason about the beliefs, inclusion, and protocols. It is a logic of who believes what about whom. So basically, in order to use this uh, bound logic to prove the logic correctness of the proposed solution, uh, we, we have to follow the steps required by bound logic. First step is going to have the idealization of the protocol, uh, transform the protocol into the idealized form. Second step is the development of initial assumptions, identity assumptions in band logic. The third step is the establishment of a specific goal and confirm the goals of reasoning. The last step is use the postulate to derive the goals, to say that uh, based on those uh, uh, rules, Biologic rules, the goals can be achieved so that uh, uh, if the goal the goal has can be retrieved, that which means that uh, the entire protocol design is uh, free of errors. So after the security functionality evaluation, we also have the uh, performance evaluation. So we're basically to use the uh, Simulation, uh, simulator to evaluate the performance of iOS HA scheme, which we have uh, uh, designed. And also to compare the other two new solutions by some other researchers. Well, we can see that uh, in other, uh, we have the comparison with the 3D PP standard. While well, we have a little bit more higher uh communication and computation cost than the 3dpp standard while on the other hand our scheme has improved the security foundation of the 3dpp standard and the other two they have advanced advanced security functionality while they have much uh, higher communication and computation costs. So that uh, we can see that by this uh, simulation result, we can see that uh, we can achieve the balance between the security functionality and the performance of the 5G network. So another example we have developed to improve the security functionality of 5G network is a, a lightweight traceable B2D authentication and key agreement scheme, which is named as the LT ATA. The purpose of this uh, solution is going to secure the B2D communication in 5G wireless networks. This uh, scheme can improve the security in most use the open device discovery process and one-to-one -one network communication scenarios. So because this is a D2D, simple D2D communication, uh, the direct communication so that uh, this scheme is able to protect, uh, protect the one-to-one uh, -one communication, D2D communication, while it also can protect the user equipment information uh, free from the leakage. 
This scheme holds the following outstanding features. One is the privacy-preserving device discovery. The second one is the device anonymity and mutual authentication between the devices can be achieved. And finally, to, achieve, to ne negotiate uh, a key which can be used for the exchange information between two D2D devices uh, for the secure information delivery. And the last one is the message recognition uh, so that uh, to further to protect the, the, the information exchange between two D2D devices. This scheme is able to res resistant to some typical attacks, including evil dropping, mine in the middle attacks, relay replay attacks, and free writing attacks. So what's the free writing attacks? Which is a unique uh, security function uh, pro pro provided by this uh, scheme, which is to, to prevent uh, a selfish behavior of D2D devices in a D2D communication. Because in a D2D communication, some devices connect others will ob obtain some other information while this device may refuse all incoming connections to save the bandwidth and the battery of that device. So this is not uh, initially, essentially it is not a, a type, but it is a selfish behavior to impair the D2D communication network. So that uh, with this kind of free writing attack, it's so possible that uh, to make the D2D communication network to be severely impaired. So with this, uh, with the solution we, we design, uh, we, the, 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 the protocol can trace and detect possible free writing user equipment and uh, block free writing, uh, uh, free writing user equipment and to 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 in order to save the D two D communication uh, in a, in a way. In order to evaluate the performance, uh, in order to evaluate the security function of the uh, the de designed protocol, this time we have not used a uh, logic, but we use a Cyber tool. Cyber tool is a formal verification tool based on so-called a perfect cryptography assumption. Um, by this tool, it's easy to find logic errors and potential attacks under the uh, Dolake Yaw model. So basically, the the site is uh, is a platform. Uh, in order to use a site, in order to use this uh, platform, um, the proposed solution. Uh, need to be modeled in the in the language provided by the environment, and then this model will will be delivered to the Cyber uh, platform to automatically uh, evaluate the, the the security functions specified uh, by the by the language provided by Cyber two, and finally the output will be. Uh, indicate why the, uh, the, 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 this, the model, the protocol is secure or insecure. Uh, if it is insecure, some attack examples will be show off. So this is a kind of uh, so-called formal verification tool in order to automatically verify the design the protocol, security protocol. Uh, after that, we also perform the uh, simulation uh, evaluation to in order to perform to evaluate the performance of the, the proposed scheme LTATE. So from this figure, it's clear that uh, the proposed scheme has the lowest uh, delay due to its uh, its uh, commut commutation low lowest uh, commutation cost and the uh, uh, computation cost, uh, even compared with the 5G 
uh, 5G D2G communication. So it's, it's a much lower, uh, even without a much, uh, without a much increase when the un unknown attack increased. So we have simply introduced two types of uh, two two solutions to 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 protect the two types of uh, operation scenarios in 5G wireless network. Uh, now we 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 have uh, we 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 disclose some open research issues which need further investigation. So the first issue is inside the handover authentication. Uh, if there are massive devices, uh, they are going to have the authentication, especially handover authentication, to be performed at the same time. How the fancy wire network will process those uh, authentication requests, especially when those massive devices is in the movement in a high speed uh, with a high speed of mobility, particularly when the, those massive devices are in a in a high speed train or high speed uh, bus or some other high-speed uh, vehicles. So, uh, because those uh, massive devices will perform the handover at the same time, of course, handover authentication also at the same time. So whether the 5G system is able to handle massive devices to have the handover authentication at the same time is a big uh, challenge. So further investigation on this issue is, is uh, highly demanded because in, in, in the future development, development of high-speed train, inside of the high-speed train, a lot of users, user equipment are there. So that uh, without support of um, massive devices to have the handover authentication at the same time, for those passengers in the high speed train, we now get uh, the, the internet service supported by 5G network. So this is a this is a number one issue in order to support the passengers in the high speed train to use a 5G wireless network and further internet service. Second is the confidentiality and integrity. Uh, preserving because the security schemes are required to ensure the confidentiality and integrity of sensitive data, which are supposed to be the confidential data of the user equipment. And um, without the protection of the uh, sensitive data, it's easy for the uh, user equipment to lose their uh, 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 confidential information. So, you, especially in the in the scenario that uh, also the user equipment are supposed in, inside the high speed train, so that uh, without this kind of ability, uh, it is easy for those uh, uh, user equipment to lose the, the, the confidential information. The third issue is that, uh, how about universal solution? Uh, because 5G wireless network has its ability to integrate the heterogeneous communication technology inside 5G wireless architecture. So that uh, if we have some kind of uh, 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 different types of communication technology integrated in 5G wireless network, and the user need also to have the uh, handover and uh, handover authentication to, to perform. So that uh, how does 5G wireless network to handle the user's 
with use of heterogeneous communication. That's a that's also a big issue or difficult issue to to investigate. The other the other uh, issue is that uh, how about the performance? As we mentioned, the, the performance of the security uh, function and the performance uh, and the and, uh, performance of the network and the security function to keep the balance, especially to support the D2D communication, because the D2D communication uh, may or may not need the help of the uh, GNOB. While those uh, user, dev uh, user devices are supposed to be resource limited, and they may have massive devices. So that uh, how to keep the balance of the efficiency and the effectiveness is a big issue for the D2D communication. The last but not the, uh, the, the, the not the least, that uh, how about the group communication support? So if there's a group of users want to get uh, authentication uh, handover and authentication at the same time, how this group of the users will be supported? Particularly, how about a group of heterogeneous D2D device are going to have the handover while it needs to have an effective uh, signaling reduction, effective communication with low cost of communication and the computation resources. So this is the, uh, the, the, the most difficult situation to be considered in a 5G wireless communication to provide security service. So I, I think those are the uh, five issues need further research, um, need a collaboration among those researchers in the world to, to overcome those uh, vulnerabilities, to provide in, in efficient solutions uh, to solve the, the secure fiber communication uh, scenarios. Okay, I think uh, this is uh, supposed to be the last slide of my speech. That uh, simple, very simple. I have uh, simple summarized. That uh, in this talk, we have introduced the 5G wireless network architecture with various network scenarios. And this 5G wireless network has been specified in 3GPP technical specification TS23.501, release 16. And also, we have mentioned the security requirements of 5G wireless network uh, with exploration of the security vulnerabilities and the potential malicious attacks. Uh, motiv uh, motivated for our research work on security of 5G wireless network has been revealed. Um, further, we have introduced two pieces of security solutions we have developed uh, to target protection of the 5G wireless net network from the malicious attacks. So at last, some potential research issues on 5G wireless network security have been discussed. Uh, with this, we have the aim to promote potential research collaboration on those uh, topics. Okay, I think that's all of my speech. It is exactly maybe 40, 40 minutes. So any questions are welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ma. Uh, uh, in very interesting and um, presentation. Uh, I will.